Hello everyone, the topic of this video tutorial is subcategorization in the data gap filling section of the QSAR toolbox. Subcategorization is the process of refining the initial category by applying relevant to the target endpoint profilers. The process of categorization consists of defining the primary group and further refining the primary group by eliminating dissimilar chemicals. How does this work in practice? This is illustrated by the following figure. For example, if the target endpoint is skin sensitization EC3, we need to use a relevant profiler to define the primary group. If a mechanism of interaction is found for the target chemical as a parent chemical or as a result of metabolism, use this information to collect analogs. If no interaction mechanism is available for the target chemical, apply a structure-based profiler and collect a broader chemical group with structurally similar chemicals. In both cases, subsequent further category refinement should involve the application of related mechanistic profilers, in many cases in combination with a metabolic simulator to eliminate dissimilar chemicals. In a final step, one could apply structure-based profilers to refine the list with the remaining analogs. Now let us go to the toolbox, where we will use the target chemical from the alert performance tutorial and predict the EC3 value for this chemical. In summary, this is a multifunctional chemical for which the alert performance was calculated to indicate the alert with highest performance, which was then used to define the primary group. There are nine chemicals with 25 data points for EC3. Let us continue with read across. Change the scale to skin sensitization EC3 and confirm. For our information, we open the helpers, the first one says that there are data with qualifiers, and the second one informs that there are chemicals with different substance type. Now let us continue with the subcategorization. To do this, we need to open the select slash filter section and select subcategorize, the subcategorization window appears. Here we can see the same profiling schemes that were presented in the profiling section and that are also available in the category definition section for building the primary category. On the other side of the dialog are additional fields, which are going to be explained in seconds. The second helper said that there are different substance types that we can now select from the list of profilers. Now we see that the result appears in these sections. Here at the top we see the profiling result of the target chemical based on the selected profiler. Below we see the result of the analogs based on the same profiler. In the list of profiling results for the analogs, the profiling results that differ from the profiling results for the target chemical are highlighted. This is exactly how subcategorization works, it highlights the differences and we can easily remove these analogs. Two additional options control the highlighting of the differences listed here, at least one category which is selected by default means that the system will highlight as different the chemical having at least one different category compared to the target chemical. All categories, this option is more restrictive and requires the same combination of profiling results of the target to be also found in each of the analogs, all the profiling results are logically andied. In this case, there are two chemicals with different profiling results. The number of the different to the target chemicals can be seen below. The analogs with different profiling are highlighted in the graph and in the data matrix. Let's remove the different chemicals by clicking on the Remove Selected button. Now, we are going to use a mechanistic profiler associated with the target endpoint, and this is the same one we use to create the primary group. Select Protein Binding Alerts for Skin Sensitization by Oasis. For primary grouping, we did not select the strict options. This means that the category may still include substances that have the same alerts as the target but also additional alerts that are not present in the target. In this example, there is one chemical that has an additional interaction mechanism and we can decide to remove it during subcategorization. The remaining list of analogs interact with skin proteins via the same interaction mechanism as the target chemical, and there are no additional protein binding alerts in their structures. We do not need to further refine the category because all remaining chemicals have the same interaction mechanism with the target chemical and they were collected based on the alert with the highest alert performance. The predicted EC3 value is given here in the graph heading and is based on the averaged EC3 values of the closest analogs. Keep in mind that this tutorial was created to illustrate the subcategorization functionality in the QSAR toolbox, 
and does not provide recommendations on how to perform an acceptable read across under reach. This is why essential aspects for acceptable read across, including the quality of the underlying experimental data, availability of robust study summaries, the impact on the toxicity of the structural differences between target and analogs are not discussed. Let us accept the prediction. We switch to the data matrix and see the predicted EC3 value of the target chemical in the corresponding cell. Now we can report the prediction. Please see the corresponding video tutorial on how to do this. Note that the predicted value may not be the same in the next tutorials. Congratulations! You are now familiar with the QSAR Toolbox Data Gap Filling Subcategorization Process.